Selamat malam, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat malam dan salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Uh, first of all, I would like to say sorry to all international and speaker uh, participant that I will uh, present my uh, this webinar uh, mixed in Bahasa in uh, in English since uh, we have participant from uh, other than Indonesia and uh, mostly coming from Indonesia. And in this webinar, uh, we have uh, topics about ATC talks, challenges to the ATC services restart post COVID-19, uh, facing the new normal with professional readiness. And we also have four uh, professional speakers. And the first one is Mr. Fick van der Westhausen. He is a IQ expert, and he will uh, share to us about global standard perspective uh, managing the industry restart during COVID-19. And the next speaker will be Mr. Anthony Ang. He is a uh, executive vice president, uh, Asia Pacific region of International Federation of Air Traffic Controller Association. And he will uh, share to us about international ATC professional perspective, potential challenges perspective during restart. And the third speaker will be Mr. Wisnu Darjono. Uh, he is a uh, president of Center for Strategic and Aviation Studies Indonesia, and he will uh, share to us about academic perspective, safe flight navigating uh, during industry restart. And the fourth speaker will be Mr. Zainal Arifin Harahap, uh, also known as Bang Ucok. Selamat malam, Bang. Uh, he is a vice president professional of uh, Indonesia Traffic Control Association, and he will uh, deliver to us about Indonesia ATC professional perspective about uh, ATC professional mitigation plan during industry restart. And before we start the webinar, I would like to invite Mr. Ivan Yusri Mahardika from CSIS Indonesia to share about the webinar tip and etiquette. Mr. Ivan, uh, time is yours. Okay, good evening, uh, Indonesia and Singapore, and good morning, uh, Montreal, Canada. In this opportunity, I would like to share you about our tips and ethics about our webinar, the ATC Talk Challenge to the ATC Service Restart Post COVID 19, facing the new normal with the professional readiness. For optimal viewing, access the webinar using a computer with a high speed internet connection and audio speakers. If you attend the webinar by only using the phone option, there will be insufficient data while you attend our webinar. Make sure that every participant's device on the mute mode by microphone before entry our webinar. We will give some participant time to take some discussion with the panelists by asking some questions. And all participants can put their own questions in a Q&A column. CSES will provide the panelist content information after the webinar. And CSPS also will provide all the participants link to their own certificate of their own link. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ivan, for the sharing about webinar tips and etiquette. And to make everything short, I would like to invite Mr. Fick van der Westhausen from IKO to share the presentation about global standard perspective on managing the industry restart during COVID-19. Mr. Fick van der Westhausen, time is yours. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm just waiting for Daddy to put on the, the, the presentation, then we can start from there. But while I'm waiting, uh, my presentation, uh, looking at the current challenges, the transition period and the restart challenges, as I call it, it's not all encompasses because this is just a general summary of what's happening around the world. I'm looking forward to FATCA and also specifically Indonesia's presentation to see what's really happening, happening in that part of the world because they're, of course, much more involved in what's taking place in that. The, the, the Asia Pacific being one of the biggest markets, travel markets in the world, of course, in a way is writing uh, the, the script for future development and a post COVID-19. So uh, Daddy, if we can go to slide, the slide two, please. Sorry about that. We're just waiting for the presentation.
Let's see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. My presentation is with Daddy, and uh, uh, and he assured me that he would do that. If it's not, I can share this. I'll try and share the screen with you as well. Mm -hmm. I think if we wait um, too long, maybe we can. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, Vic uh, and everybody. Uh, I'd like to. Um, there is a, a technical problem here. I'm trying to uh, stop the um, uh, the uh, presentation and the webinar, but it seems there's a. Could I suggest maybe we can ask the second speaker to commence with his, and then I'll complete it when we com we, we address the technical problem. Sure. Yes. Um, let me share my screen first. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You need to do any introduction okay. before I start, or yes. I can just uh, kick off. Okay. Since we have a problem technique with. Uh... Mr. Fick uh, slide presentation. So we uh, so we skip the next speaker, and this will be uh, Mr. Anthony Eng of uh, Executive Vice President Asia Pacific Region of uh, International Federation of Air Traffic Controls Association. Mr. Anthony, uh, time is yours. All right. Thank you. Uh, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for the invitation to speak. So uh, I am from Efaka, and uh, I'm Anthony is my name. So today, basically, I'll be just uh, sharing potential challenges that you might face when uh, during in the uh, course of a restart. All right. So. Uh, Okay, so for the potential challenges, uh, this would be what I'll be uh, talking about for today. So I think one of you guys is uh, doing the echo. So can someone mute the mic? All right. Okay, so uh, I'll be talking about six of them. So uh, first one, unsure pilots and uh, I mean, experienced pilots. So we, uh, for ATC side, right? When, when you are doing the, your work, so when COVID hits you, actually you still goes to work. So uh, job stability wise is not really hitting you that much. But for pilots, uh, they, they could be facing job stability, uh, this uh, job stability uh, problems and day in, day out during the lockdown, they could be even be surfing on the you know internet, getting information on uh, you know airlines uh, the 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 what's that called? The estimated amount of uh, uh, this uh, airlines that's left after the COVID is uh, estimated to be 50% of the airlines left flying. And so day in, day out, when you get yourself into a so-called all this type of uh, negative information overload, so they get, they, they might be, you know, below the depression. And uh, also there might be a lack of a uh, real flying. So, and also the thing about getting infected. So if you, if you do not have any friends that get infected, you might not fear this. But if you have got friends and relatives that died because of COVID, you will have this fear of uh, going to work and bring the virus home. So, and there could be a lot more that uh, maybe cash flow problems and stuff that uh, is affecting the pilot itself. So, how do you mitigate this? And why is there a potential risk? So, you could have a pilot that actually doesn't execute the, your, your turns and your climb, or he could have uh, entered a wrong uh, so-called uh, levels to climb example. So, but how, how do you detect this? So it would be through track error management. So you got to, uh, like example, if you find that the pilot today is not very confident, he's uh, stammering, but he sounds very experienced. So this is when you're like, okay, uh, I'll be careful. I need to identify the trend. I'm not going to do anything that is uh, uh, too sudden to him. And the identify and share. For this identify and share is, Again, part of the track error management uh, that is you need to go downstream. I 
now at the area, I detected that this pilot might not be confident or might have some issues. Uh, so I will then tell approach that, hey, you know, uh, Blue Sky One is going to call you later, but uh, the pilot seems to be a little bit, uh, uh, you know, not himself, might be uh, nervous or what. So you just uh, take care of him. Example, so this is, this is when you share down the line, take care of the pilots. And if there's a risk taking, do it on the correct end. If you got a day, normal day to day again, you cannot expect the pilot's uh, so-called uh, skills to be there. You're coming in one with zero seven left Jakarta. Eight miles final, there is a so-called, uh, uh, you know, uh, bird strike. You couldn't, you couldn't now tell the pilot, uh, you know, sidestep runway 07, right? Descend 1,500 feet before established. You, you, they won't be able to do that kind of a thing anymore. And if there's any risk taking, do it safely. Don't, don't push the pilot to go on the wrong end. Or if you find that the pilot is really too high, too fast, you don't allow him to come in for the approach, right? So next on the uh, ATCO environment, operating environment. So workplace hygiene, why, why did I bring this up as a workplace hygiene during a, the so-called restart? When COVID start, your workplace will have a certain hygiene for you to follow, certain procedures for you to follow. But when the day goes by slowly, you uh, the, the amount of things that you do to up keep this hygiene might deteriorate. So this is when uh, people might uh, also uh, you know, don't care about uh, wiping, wiping clean and uh, disinfecting before handover, example. So this is one challenge. Next on the prolonged low-medium traffic, sudden spike. So uh, I will link it to the third point, which is the scale down easy, scale up complex and difficult. So, but why? So if you take a look now, if you were to scale down, it's quite easy. Collapse position, combine position. Then after that, what happens? Then you, then you find that, hey, today these two sector, you know, after after two months, still nothing much. Let's combine them. So once you combine and combine, but when the traffic starts to return, that's when you go to low or medium traffic. Then after that, did you do anything to the arrangement for the uh, AAR of the airport? I don't think so. Or most likely some, uh, you know, you might not think about traffic coming back that fast. So it will happen that the traffic might for that hour, still following the previous AAR and come in at the same time. And this is when you get an overload and a sudden spike that is beyond the controller's uh, means of uh, working because it's, uh, it's, it's just like combining three sectors and working that kind of traffic for that kind of uh, you know, short period or sudden spike is just beyond uh, that one controller. So next thing is on uh, also upskill. You need to keep your reserve watch. But if you do not want to keep your reserve watch, what are the things that... Uh, because you're now opening up. When you open up, you do not have... Uh, you know, sufficient uh, staff and plus. How about your training, which I'll touch on uh, later on. Then next on the reduced uh, airport capacity. So right now, uh, you might be working with uh, like 100 base, but take a look at the amount of aircraft on the tarmac. Do you think they will move away? Answer is don't think so. Do you think they'll start flying? Not really. Statistics or uh, estimation or forecast from uh, the experts say that 50% of the uh, airlines is going to be, you know, uh, gone and the rest of the 50 continue. So how about those aircraft? If let's say that aircraft from that airline is a bankrupt, no longer flying, how long do you think that aircraft will stay on that position? It could be a few years before they finish off, uh, you know, handing over and selling off assets and, and uh, moving on assets and etc. So, but what happens to airport capacity? When traffic starts returning, you you will find that it becomes very complicated because you run out of bay, you run out of a maneuvering area and there will be a lot of towings for you to tow here and there and changing base and here and there. So this is when the capacity no, no longer is about the sky, it's about the amount of space on the ground that uh, your controllers at the tower can handle. And the next, the fellow ATCO level of competency. So uh, it's, it's, it's just, I'll just uh, link it to driving. So if you drive a you know, manual car, I, for 10 years, I ask you to drive an automatic car. It's easy. But if, I, if you were to drive automatic car for 10 years, and now I say that go and drive a manual car, the first time or second time you'll get a lot of stall and you, know, you need time to get used to it. It's, it's, it's the same thing as a skill, skill base. Your cognitive skill will actually deteriorate if you don't use it often. So this is when, when traffic comes back, you might not be able to, uh, uh, your competency level might not be that high in order to cope with the demand. 
now next on training. So uh, as you guys uh, saw on the internet, uh, there's a, uh, you know, training, trainees uh, being so-called asked to go. But when on the, uh, when traffic is returning, you need to start resuming your training. But how, but you'll be thinking, how am I supposed to assess the training? How about the validation? It's, it's uh, many different countries, many different states, many different areas, they do it differently. But uh, basically, is uh, if you couldn't do it on live, you had to do it somehow. That is on the simulator. So, but you will then start to ask another question. Strange, how come now you accept me as a trainee? I come in and I maybe I go through one round of training. And after that, you tell me that uh, I can go to live. But once I go to OJT live, you tell me to come back into a simulator. But why so? So a lot of people also do not understand the... Uh, the, the, the workflow of uh, the training being provided. In, in the first training, it could be just to train you to validate whether are you suitable for training live. And when it goes to live, this is when you will learn all the tricks from your OGTI. And they might train you differently in uh, problem solving, the ops way, so-called. So this is when to prepare them for, for the mindset change, for the new norm, for the, for the future. When there's not enough uh, traffic, you have to do uh, simulator, no choice. But again, then another question would then ask again, what if now, uh, let's just say during this timing, during the COVID, you pass and you get a license, would the new ATCO be able to grow in time with the traffic? Yes and no. But are you able to predict it? No. How uh, Are you able to measure it? No. But how can you help the new ATCO to grow in time? So that, that, there are a lot of ways, but... Uh, I just quoting one example, it could be now you pass and I say that uh, traffic comes back maybe 40% or 50%, I will do a revalidation to validate you for the future. And that could be the so-called stopgap measure or, or the filter to gauge whether are you able to grow on time example. But the next thing uh, on training would be on rated ATCO. So you have been working, you know, thousands of uh, departures and arrival per, per day. And Saturday now is like a 300, 400. So would you be able to handle when it goes out to 800? How about 900? How about 1,000? So this is when you need to start to, to you know, uh, uh, during COVID, you might eat too much and you lose your muscle, you get fat. You need to go back to the gym and build it up and, you know, slim down and get muscular again. So this is when you need to start to thinking about training for the ATCO to train them back in their competency. Licensing, these three are just uh, more or less classifying it together as the same, same issue that we might take a look. So in the English proficiency would be more like uh, you do not, you're unable to go for the course. So when you're doing your online course, you might not be able to uh, uh, you know, uh, progress with the course and plus you might not be IT, that, that well IT uh, illiterate. So in the end, you might not perform well in the online course and that's why you might fail. So that could be one of the issues or potential challenge. On the class three medical, it could be, uh, you know, uh, eat too much, you didn't exercise enough and you feel medical, that could be one of the potential. Or you could uh, think too much, read too much information and you get uh, depressed uh, of what is happening to your friends or, or to the world. So you might have a medical uh, issue in order to get past your medical. Then about the recency. So this recency is uh, strangely, when you need a reserve watch, you, you will not have enough time to so-called plug in and get the reason and not uh, forgetting if you need to get the, your so-called ATCO to do for the simulator sections. So, so when all this thing add up, then you will need to revisit your recency. Is the requirement still valid? Is the requirement still easily you know, uh, achieved? If not, you need to do some form of, uh, you know, uh, alteration. Now, well-being. So this well-being is very general. So it's just the well-being of a human being, cash flow problems and stuff and what, what, whatever not that you see there. But most important, I would just say that uh, the peers and the mentor, please look out for one another. You will never know that person might be smiling at you and the next thing you know, the person is gone and and uh, because of uh, depression and, and, you know, yeah. So, Next would be the last uh, slide, stepping into the future. So as you know, pre-COVID, you have a lot of uh, complaints about congestion, about 
about uh, your seat and your star being designed poorly, you'll be like, how come these areas are always uh, crisscrossing? Can't they just, uh, you know, put everything in parallel routes uh, to make it easy for the controller? Why is uh, so many, you know, uh, uh, when I want to climb someone, I need to look up for so many traffic from north, south, east, west. So this is when a very good time for you to solve your congestion problem, to really design your seat and star, and particularly airways is because right now the traffic volume is low. Yes, your domestic might be restarting, but the international route uh, still is uh, on the way, slowly but surely. So this is when, if you need to redesign everything, it's, uh, it will be so-called uh, minimum impact. There will be impact, but not as uh, you know uh, dangerous as when there's so many traffic and you need to get everybody to change the airways and stuff. Now, uh, resectorization. So if, if uh, you, you can see that actually, slowly the traffic changes pattern and when during the recovery the traffic pattern will change again why so because a lot of uh, airlines they might reduce the amount of destination that they go to so this is when uh, you might have an imbalance of uh, so-called uh, traffic in another sector so a resectorization could be required how are we going to reduce uh, carbon emission help the pilots so free to airspace if you were to take a look europe is already ongoing and uh, Asia Pack, I think we are slowly going to free route airspace as well. If you could think about free route airspace, think about amount of uh, traffic that is uh, next time you might not even need airways anymore. It will be a point to point that after I get out of the uh, terminal area, I direct track for for the boundary point. Yeah, or even the uh, or, or the arrival part when you and in future there's going to be TBO as well. So a lot of things that we can do and. Next on the CCO, on the CDO, it's all very PBN. Uh, then the next one is uh, ATFM. So ATFM, again, uh, we are now regional. We try, you, we try to get the domestic up as regional. I'm sure, I'm sure we are all looking into it. Then Asia Pacific, yes, we are going into it. So the next thing would be global. Because there's so many ATFM units uh, all around, it, uh, in order for us to have one global one, it's going to be difficult. But we could uh, think of uh, ways that we can collaborate uh, between ATFMU units uh, all around the world to come up with uh, a global one, maybe. So, yeah, so I'm not uh, saying that uh, I cover everything. So I do hope that it's a very brief and I hope that I didn't uh, bust the timing. So that all, that's all that I have. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you very much, Mr. Anthony Eng, such a good presentation. Uh, selamat datang, kami ucapkan kepada Bapak uh, Muhammad Iksan Tatang yang sudah hadir di antara kita sebagai panelis juga, dan juga ada perwakilan dari Airnav Indonesia, ada Pak Roy Johannes dan Bapak uh, Yuyun Nugraha. And also we have to inform you guys that uh, currently we have 88 participants in Zoom meeting and still counting and still growing. And also, we also live uh, in YouTube, in our YouTube channel. And to make everything short, I would like to uh, invite the next speaker. And this will be uh, to Mr. Fick van der Westhausen uh, from uh, IKO, expert. And he will uh, share to us about global standard perspective, uh, managing the industry restart during COVID-19. To Mr. Uh, Fick. Time is yours. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I think we're going to be successful this time. Daddy, can you go to uh, slide two, please? Okay, this is the areas which I discussed earlier. Uh, and, and by the way, it was a very informative presentation from a fat car. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to join the, the current challenges, the transition period, and the restart. That's not so much from an air traffic control technical point of view, but I will addressed it more from a general point of view. So if we look at the current challenges, like if Hatka has mentioned, many of these are, are familiar, are you all familiar with? There's a decrease of number of aircraft operation, social distancing, there's a lack of training and even the refresher training. We know medical certificates, exams has been postponed. We have a problem, there's a new requirement, COVID in a work environment. There's a new handover procedure. You cannot just walk in like in the old days, plug in your headsets and sit next to your friend. Some countries are using the same teams, 
because they reckon if they test the same teens on a regular basis, if one of them a positive the test, then the whole team will go in isolation. And there's a po potential degradation of skills, of course, because we're not doing the work as we've done before. Slightly. Now, many countries in the world are following this procedure. They call it operational categories. There's an operational duty, a hot standby, and a cold standby. And the team A will be the, 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 the actual team that will be on duty at the time. Then you have a team B, because the day uh, team A arrives, one of them tests positive, what are you going to do with a service? So you need to have a team B in place as well. It's like a shadow team that can. And then you have a cold a team C in case something happens, then you can go back and these guys can go on vacation if necessary. Next one, please. Now, many airports where it's possible to establish these teams, you would find they would have a team e A on operational duty. Team B will be the hot standby, doing similar work to team A if required. There will be a rotation every 15 days and the airport, if it's not too compressible, similar shifts may be applied in consequence of reduction of service hours. Next one, please. Where it's not possible, and there's a continuity of service required, we create segregated teams. One in operational DT, other in hard standby. We have a shift in a shadow mode where they can get a vacation, like I said earlier. And then airports where time reductions are not implemented, you can adopt a single person operation if it's required. Next slide, please. Now we're looking at other operations. We're looking at briefing offices. We're looking at the no-time office, et cetera, the Met office, similar to what we've just discussed. Many countries do it all over the world. Next team, the next slide, please. Now technical staff, they recommend in many areas in the world that they follow a similar pattern or team shift pro category that they've been adopted by the air traffic controllers. Next slide, please. One of the problems you see, if we look at the transition period, one of the problems that we have is maintaining competency for ATCs during the COVID-19 because of many of the reasons that I've discussed. Because variations in traffic combined with the workforce sporadically operation. The challenge related to recurrent training and validation. There's limitations on the job training like was pointed out by IFATCA. The, there's effective virtual training. There's maintaining the competency for handling continuous situations. What should you do? Should you train for continuous situations? What happens the day it arrives? Then if we look also at the number of staff that's reduced, when we arrive again post-19, we might find that a lot of the staff has left us, either retired or furloughed, and they are not as uh, validated as yet. Uh, we look at control, uh, control and medical conditions that goes unchecked during this time, especially by the AME, which is maybe postponed, and there are no physical separation possible during position of handover and takeover. Next slide, please. There's an increase of risk affecting other that could provoke absentees. People would become a little bit scary of going to work because they've had somebody sick and more of them would like to stay at home. There's a pending validation. What do you do with the people? I know in certain parts of the world, there are people that they stop training at all and these people has been put on vacation. Like I said, it's delayed. Prolonged OJT, you cannot do it because we have coronavirus now saying social distancing. So the training becomes also a problem in the simulator. Next, next slide, please. So the controllers are unable to maintain their operational skills during the eruption. The control is exposed to different traffic patterns and methods, like explained by FATCA. There's a different pace and capacity recovered by service providers. The, the service provider in, in, in Indonesia, the procedures and the way and the timing that they will recover would be different from from Singapore or maybe any of the uh, of your neighbors there. There's insufficient coordination with traffic flow management units. The airports now has a lot of aircraft on the ground, so the capacity is reduced. There's insufficient and in simulated scenarios exercises for, for this kind of problem. There's a low pre predictability of traffic evaluation, et cetera. Next slide, please. 
I've not covered all the potential hazards and you will see the slides it contains more information than normal, but I thought that if you want to use it afterwards, it'd be easier to make it a little bit longer. There's not enough standby problems because a lot of your staff has been furloughed. Huh? The extension of temporary solutions could be applied further on. There's an increase in operational pressure to generate the minimum delays because the people would like to get moved. Eurocontrol is forecast of 50 to 60% normal traffic by December. Briefing time may be overrun because the pilots like the FATCA said is gonna be very uncertain of what is working, what is the new procedures, et cetera. And then social distancing, which we've already covered. Next slide, please. A civil consideration for training and recency. There's varying levels after a period to reduce operation. Uh, there's a combination of new and amplified risk and challenges. And there's a combination of extensions of licenses and recurrent training and validation for the crew and the traffic controllers. Mm -hmm. So what do we see? Again, like a fact to say, there could be a degradation of skills. Uh, the pandemic persists that could continue. We don't know when it will stop. If, uh, main, and that's to maintaining your skills. The airline and the aviation actors should work together and find out exactly what is required from the AVA, from the airlines, so you can adopt your procedures and assess the airlines which is really applied. It's critical for both sides to understand the stresses because there's gonna be currently a lot of stress and in the future, more stress. Next slide, please. Aeronautical information changes. I'm not gonna say it's the, you've already experienced it at your level, the, the economic lockdown we know has affected everybody globally. The government requirements for protocols for travels changes from day to day. It's very unclear, it's untimely, it changes on very short notice and everybody needs to take notice of this before they can start a flight or air traffic controllers for, from an operational point of view. And of course, there's a potential risk of misunderstandings and misalignment between the pilots and the traffic controllers. Next slide, please. Potential degrees skills, which was second nature to air traffic control and air traffic controllers uh, and pilots before they were doing with the eyes closed, now it's changed. So you will have to sharpen yourself up and get you up to the level where you can operate as before. It's continuously unclear aeronautical information. It's a continuous changing of the availability of information. There's gonna be a potential risk of misunderstanding. The risk of flight crews might have diminished familiarity with certain phrases. So air traffic controller is gonna give them instruction and he might do something different. And there's a higher frequency and changes to state requirements. That's gonna change from day to day, so to speak. So that's gonna be very difficult. Next slide, please. The involving environment, we know that the passenger, the crews, the safe, the health, biosafety requirements, that's going to have an effect. If it starts at the airport, it's going to end up on a gate and under the flight departure down of the aircraft. There's additional sanitary requirements. There's additional layers at the airport, what passengers should do. There's a number of parked aircraft at different airports. There's advantage of low uh, traffic at the moment, but that's going to change. It's important to avoid taking shortcuts, therefore, and making empty decisions. Now, if we look at a training on a new normal, we don't know how long COVID's going to last. There is going to be a different way of, of, of training in the future, especially while it's lasting. We have virtual training tools, which we would find that we will use more often because of COVID. It's tools that you might want to consider that are like the AR and, and virtual reality. They, you must train for contingency scenarios because the pilots and air traffic controllers has not been exposed to this for a long time, especially ATC. So you might want to train for a contingency scenario. And this is a revised training framework. There's different layers of virtual modules in the classroom simulator and assessments. Next slide, please. Gentlemen and ladies, that brings me to the end of this presentation. It was just a summary. You will find at the end of the presentation a reference sheet with all the documents that I've used, where I got this information from. You're more than welcome to use that. And if there are any questions, please put it in the Q&A and I'll see if I can answer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, Mr. Fick, for the West Ocean. Such a good presentation. And to all attendees, please kindly 
if you have any question, uh, drop your question in a Q&A menus down below. Uh, selamat datang kami mengucapkan kepada para partisipan yang baru bergabung. Ya, hingga saat ini kita memiliki 95 partisipan uh, di dalam Zoom meeting dan juga kita memiliki uh, 20 sekian ada di YouTube CSIS TV. Um, kiranya jika ada pertanyaan silahkan uh, diberikan di dalam Q&A menu. Terima kasih. And the next presentation will be from Mr. Wisdu Darjono and he is a uh, president of Center for Strategic and Aviation Studies Indonesia and he will uh, share to us about academic perspective uh, safe flight navigating during industry research. Kepada Bapak Wisnu Daryono, waktu dan tempat kami persilahkan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sore. Good evening, Indonesia, Singapore, and good morning, Pak Fix from Montreal. Thank you, moderator, Mas Ari Satria Putra. Honorable speakers, Mr. Fix van der Veldhuizen, Mr. Anthony Ang from IFATKA, and also Mr. Zainal Arifin Harahap. Uh, saya senang memanggil beliau ini Bang Ucok. Ladies and gentlemen, the CSS webinar participants. Paparan belum bisa keluar, Mas. Alhamdulillah, we can gather in this virtual space in a healthy condition. While many of our brother and sister are out there in a difficult situation, struggling against COVID-19 in stressful economic situation. Thank you for the opportunity given to me to deliver the presentation on the topic of ATC talks, challenges to the ATC services restart post COVID-19, facing the new normal with the professional readiness. On this occasion, I was asked by CSES teams to deliver a presentation entitled Academic Perspective Safely Navigating the Industry Restart. Next. Today, 17 September, is the day of Indonesian national transportation, whereas last September, uh, last September 13, 2020, was Ernaf Indonesian 8th anniversary. Dirgahayu, Dirgahayu National Transportation. Dirgahayu Ernaf Indonesia. Hopefully, we are, as the transportation community in Indonesia, are able to work together, support each other hand in hand, and collaborate to create reliable transportation in Indonesia especially the work of aviation for the progress and welfare of the Indonesian nation. Next. I divided this, this presentation into three parts. In the first part, I will explain the background of air navigation service in Indonesia. In part two, I describe the current aviation traffic situation in the field, while the last part, the third part, I explain what ATC needs to prepare in the field of, to prepare itself for the new condition that will come. Next. Air navigation services in Indonesia are legally regulated in law number one of 29, 2009 about aviation. It is stated in article 271 paragraph 1 that the government of the Republic of Indonesia is responsible for the operation of flight navigation services for aircraft operating in Indonesian airspace. 
that this responsibility was delegated to Airnav Indonesia on the basis of government regulation number 77 of 2012, dated September 13, 2012, in which Airnav Indonesia is responsible to Minister of Transportation in carrying out these activities. So the discussion related to the policy of aviation navigation services in, in Indonesia during the pandemic, which was carried out by AirNav Indonesia as the operator, cannot be separated from the policies implemented by the government of Indonesia as the regulator. Next slide, please. As an operator that carry out government duty in providing air navigation services in Indonesia, AirNav Indonesia obligation to always comply with the law as well as all regulations set by government. In this case, of course, AirNav Indonesia must be able to ensure the readiness of human resources in providing air navigation services, ensure the reliable reliability of air navigation facility, ensure aviation safety, expedite orderly flow of air traffic, ensure the work system and its implementation in the workplace are in accordance with the COVID-19 service standard. In this case, social distancing, hand sanitizer, room cleaner, cleanliness of work facility, and so on. Next slide. Current state, uh, traffic movement operating in Indonesian airspace are served by AirNav Indonesia, which originally averaged 6,000 up to 7,000 traffic movement per day. Currently averaging only 2,500 movement, around 47% compared to before the outbreak of the COVID-19. Over flying planes that cross Indonesian airspace from an average of 400 to 500 aircraft per day, currently, currently there are only 100 aircraft served by ACC Jakarta and ACC Makassar. ATC Indonesia this day, which usually control very dense traffic in Jakarta, for example, per day controls controls around 1,300 movement for takeoff and landing, currently only control about 30% of that number, about 400 up to 500 uh, traffic movement per day. What about other ATC units? Almost the same. The average traffic that is controlled only around 30% of the condition before the outbreak of COVID-19. Next. Currently, the situation in the ATC control room was very quiet. It has been around six months that his situa this situation has been going on, and who knows how long. It could be that a situation like this will still last quiet a while. Several sectors combined due to very low traffic condition. And according with the provision of the health protocol, the number of ATC on duty is also limited. Of course, this has an impact on the number of holiday for ATCs. They are forced to stay at home because COVID-19 is everywhere. This increasing boredom, also decreasing skills due to decreased frequency of controlling air traffic. Another thing that adds the, to ATC concern is the reduced income due to cut benefits by reason that the company financial condition is deteriorating. It is a perfectly reasonable excuse, but nevertheless, this will disturb their sense of security and their future welfare condition. Next slide. Human fact. Uh, some hazard could be potential challenges. As, uh, so as human factor hazard, potential of stress or emotional due to financial impact, 
degradation mental health, decrease awareness and loss of focus or attention due to long life, decrease confidence affecting skills and team performance, environment disruption, possible reduced staff availability due to COVID-19, and so on. This various hazard that threaten the safety of flight must be of concern to the leaders, both at AirNav Indonesia and for the GCA. Because if this situation is allowed to drag on, it could potentially decrease the level of aviation safety in Indonesia. Next. The government must ensure that the performance check carried out this year is still carried out according to applicable standard and is based on traffic condition in normal situation. Ensure that ATC health conditions are maintained, comply with applicable aviation standard, and enforce strict health protocols. Training using a simulator to maintain ATC skills need to be done so that its ability to manage traffic in complex situations can be maintained properly. Next slide. COVID-19 is an extraordinary health and humanitarian crisis, which has an, an impact on economic problems, social problems, work patterns, form of service, so that it's of us is required to be agile and smart and be able to quickly adapt to condition and situation that will come next. I need to emphasize here future situation. Future situation is not the next normal situation. The normal condition that, will, uh, that we imagine as the condition before the COVID is normal, which is like the situation in the beginning of 2019 or before, it feel like it will not return again. This COVID does not cause technological disruption, but rather act as a catalyst that accelerate the arrival and use of modern technology, including in the efficient sector. The future has come today. Therefore, preparing reliable human resources while the traffic situation is decreasing like now is a must. So that in time, they are ready to carry out their duties with new work situation, new technology, and new air transportation system. Next slide. Along with the preparation of human resources, of course, preparing supporting facility and reviewing and redesigning the various procedures used in air traffic services need to be done immediately. So that aviation safety in Indonesia will remain prime, better, and becoming the best. That's all I have. Terima kasih. Baik, terima kasih Pak Wisnu. Presentasi yang sangat uh, baik. Then... Before we go to the next speaker, I would like to ask uh, all the speakers uh, to make a five minute summary uh, and also answer the Q&A that uh, pointed to them. And um, the next speaker will be uh, Mr. Zainal Arifin Aharahap, aka Bang Ucok, as a fresh president professional of Interne Indonesia Traffic Control Association. And he will share to us about Indonesia ATC professional perspective, uh, ATC professional mitigation plan during industry restart. To Mr. Zainal Arifin Harahab, uh, time is yours. Thank you, Ari, and thank you to all speakers. Good morning for uh, Vic uh, from Montreal, and good evening for everyone in Indonesia. Um, uh, firstly, I would like to introduce myself. Please allow me to introduce that. Uh, my name is Zaino Arifin Arahab. I work for AirNav Indonesia as an air traffic controller. <clears throat> air traffic controller. And uh, I also um, doing the 
uh, Vice President for Professional in IATCA International, uh, sorry, Air Traffic Control Association uh, in Indonesia. So uh, tonight I will bring a presentation for mitigation plan during the industry we start in the perspective of uh, ATC professional. Can we move to the next slide, please? Yeah, as we already know that uh, COVID-19 is uh, strike everyone uh, in around the world. Uh, they hit uh, in every sector. And uh, you may you may aware that uh, in aviation is uh, also getting uh, impacted by the COVID-19. Um, there are a lot of things that we can see that you never see before in the in the history of the of the world. We we see the uh, state or country doing lockdown. The airline uh, they they close the flight. They the people who work in the company they they forced to do the, to take the volunteer leaves without uh, paid. Um, they, some of them are also reduced the, the salary in the company. And while where industries still uh, maintain their, their performance, they, they require the employee to work from home. And some of them, many things. And the, the worst case is also uh, lay of policy, bankruptcy in the, in the industry. And maybe the one that we, we don't want to, to happen to us is a loss of life. That's, that's the, the, the impact of COVID-19. For the first time in history, they strike every sector in the, in the, in the economy. And uh, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, I will uh, explain a little bit about the, uh, the traffic in history traffic number in history from 1945 to 2020. Uh, this data is taken out from the IQ website and uh, there is uh, the history from, if you see the figures from the left to the right, uh, we facing several crises in the history in the past. Like for example, in the 70s, there was oil crisis, and uh, during that time, the traffic is slowing down. But at the end of the day, uh, the, after the, 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 the turmoil, after the crisis, the traffic is going up again. Uh, based on the uh, um, uh, history, historical record, that the traffic data, the traffic numbers is going to be double every 20 years. So, even though we we facing the the crisis, there always be a demand to get the flight uh, become higher and higher. If you see in the in the in the uh, chart in the line, in the 90s, uh, during the 90s, we have uh, we had been uh, in a war, uh, Iran and Iraq in a war. Also during that time, the traffic was slowing down, and then. Later on, after maybe 10 years or 20 years, the traffic is going high, high, uh, up, up high again until we saw the uh, gold crisis. We, uh, we also facing the ASEAN crisis uh, during the monetary crisis in 19, uh, some uh, 20 something, 2000 something. And also in 2000, in 2000 we, we had a terrorist attack in uh, 911. 9-11 in uh, New York. And also the traffic is going down at that time. But history tell us that the traffic is always going up high. And uh, we saw today that in the right corner of the graph, there is uh, 2020, the traffic is going down because of the COVID-19. And we don't know until which level that the number are going uh, to the bottom line. So we will see what, what are going to happen in the next few few months or few years after this pandemic will be done or will be uh, ended. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yes. The previous slide is explaining how the traffic is, um, is uh, rising up 
from 1945 to 2020 in the perspective of global uh, view, global traffic numbers. And in this slide, I will explain about the, the, uh, the, the smallest amount of traffic from January to September for Indonesian perspective. So if you see in the left side, in the um, uh, month of January to February, the traffic is around 6,000, 6,400. That's the, the reference all along the year during the 2019. So 2020, we also still having um, production, but not too high. Uh, previously, we have some traffic more over 6,500, almost 7,000, 7,000 something. But during the January to February, the traffic is slightly down, but still, um, still quite high. When the when we entered the month of March, uh, where there was a drop point, and uh, it is indicated in the um, uh, pink arrow or red arrow, uh, that's the first time that the traffic numbers in Indonesia is going down to the latest to the bottom line during the month of May, which was only 200 movement in a day. That's the number of traffic uh, flying in Indonesian airspace. From that point, the traffic is going slightly, um, slightly higher and higher and higher uh, all the way to September today. And uh, this data, I took the data from two days ago. It was uh, 15 September uh, um, this month. And the traffic is almost 50% referred to a January flight. So we are in the position where, where now we are already in the halfway of, uh, of the uh, previous year or uh, first January uh, traffic figures. So that's, the, that's the, 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 the figure that I want to show you how is the, the COVID impacted uh, in the, in the uh, Indonesian airspace. Can we the next slide? Okay, um, facing this uh, situation uh, as an organization, Ayatka took a quick response to send the, 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 the linen mask to our members, and we also deploy the uh, campaign to our, hours. to our members using the video and poster in, in social media and in the, in the official letter to our organization, because we believe that this is, uh, needs to be um, taken care of. We have to be more serious facing this kind of uh, uh, crisis. And we also provide some uh, uh, financial uh, planning tips and also provide the emergency fund for members. We know that the numbers is not really, uh, the amount is not really uh, big, but we want, to sh we want to show to our member that we are already, we, we, are, we are there to, to help our members. With uh, this emergency fund, we is uh, by uh, installment with, uh, with no interest. And also we, we still, as an organization, we also encourage uh, our management and our uh, team to still maintain our competency with uh, doing proficiency check uh, normal without any uh, um, exemption from, from the regulator. And we also comply with the uh, company uh, protocol of COVID-19 in our uh, work, workplace. Mm -hmm. We, we do the screening before entering the, the ops room. We, we, we split the, the, the ship of uh, air traffic control into group and we combine and we split the sector as uh, necessary. And we also uh, ask them to, to always protect themselves by wearing a mask, doing a social distancing with, with their uh, colleague 
always uh, wash their hand and everything. And also we get help from, uh, we are really thankful to Airnav Indonesia because they are supporting us very well in maintaining our uh, workplace. The, they, they, they provide the routine disinfecting uh, all the equipment in the, in, the, in the office. Okay, so this is the, the, the poster or the video or the, or the, or the campaign that we, that we publish over the, over the social media. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, um, I'm going to talk about the uh, aviation industry we start. How we are going to, to, to cope with this situation? Uh, the question is, so when will the crisis end? Um, IQ has already um, provided uh, two scenario. If you, saw, if you see in the, in the slide, the, the, the previous slide I mentioned, that the traffic is going very quickly, very rapidly down to almost 96% of uh, normal uh, traffic numbers. And how we are going to deal with this situation, what is, what's need to be uh, prepared, I will explain to you in the, next, uh, in the next slide. Okay. Um, uh, the question is not only how we are going to uh, how we are going to to cope with the with the restart or, or with the new normal, but we have to be prepared um, both ways. What, what I mean both ways here is uh, we have to to be ready in the positive direction if the traffic is going up, or we have to to be ready if the direction is going negatively. I mean there is. Uh, Maybe there will be a second wave. We don't. We don't know yet about this. So we have to, as a as a professional, we have to be ready in both ways, even positively or negatively. So according to IQ uh, recommendation, there are two scenario that will uh, that that will be predicted will happen. Uh, if you if you see the scenario like uh, like Nike swoosh or W shape. It the impact will be uh, different with the ideal ideal ways. The ideal ways we want to have the V shape. We have a pandemic going down to the bottom line, and then we will get the recovery very quickly. But this is not the case. At the uh, uh, at the end of the day, we have to deal with with the situation that the ideal the ideal way is not not uh, not exist at, at the present time. So, um, according to to the data that I present you in the previous slide in uh, Indonesian uh, traffic flight numbers, um, historically we already being in that situation. I mean, as a professional, we already facing that uh, that numbers of flight. So, in terms of capability, in terms of uh, of uh, of uh, numbers, we already being we already experienced that situation. So, but this this also needs to be uh, considered that the the traffic still um, agile, it's still um, still um, we we cannot predict the, the the future number. So we will we will have to analyze on a monthly basis. Particularly, we see that some of the place like Jakarta, they, they implement the second uh, social distancing uh, in large scale. But what we, what we have to, to keep in mind that as a professional, ATC need to maintain the competency level to cope the recovering traffic, uh, despite the fact that the situation, we already been in that, in that numbers. Uh, historically, so as I mentioned before, that the traffic will be uh, recovering every twenty years. They get, they will get the double, but this COVID crisis is not really the same. Uh, the way we walk is not the same anymore. So we have to be creative. We have to be uh, to to change 
to change the the the, the way we, we we do we do things. We have to work more efficiently. We have to work more uh, effective, and while keeping use uh, using the technology. Next, please. And uh, there are still things to do. Um, we need to we need to keep utilize the simulator to maintain the ATC level, and uh, also. I agree with what Anthony said uh, in, in his presentation that this is the good time to evaluate the, the things that we already been facing before, but we had no time to, to evaluate or to analyze or to, to assess how to solve the problem. So this is the moment, the, the, the perfect time for us to evaluate. Is, this, uh, is it the, the, the airspace? Is it the... Um, good enough for us? Is it uh, effectively for us? Is the root, uh, root structure is good? Um, what, about, what about the complexity? And all, as well as we have also to implement the new procedures like uh, PBN or UPR. UPR is just something like what Anthony said in his presentation about flex, uh, flexible uh, root, flexible, flexible airspace. But this one is still using the current um, legacy route and the airline is um, the airline they, they have the option to to fly according to their own uh, needs using the current existing waypoint in the existing routes okay and also this is the we have to take advantage of momentum to bring everything back to the standard most most of the time, uh, we had incident, we had um, we had uh, uh, occurrence, but we don't have any time to to solve that kind of problem. So this is the time we we are doing the the rework what we what we had uh, done before, and also by by this time we we improve the data services. Previously, the the data. It's very scattered all over the, the place. So now uh, Ayatka and, and Ernap Indonesia, we work together to how to, to improve the quality of the data um, from the reporting analysis and to uh, from the collection reporting uh, analysis and reporting. And last but not least, we hope that the, the antivirus will be will be invented soon. Most of the country, uh, they are um, trying to, to work on this. And in the future, we will have to change our lifestyle to face, uh, to, to live with, the, with this COVID. That's, the, that's the, 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 the things that we need to consider when we believe that the, the direction of the, the, of the traffic will be positively returning back to normal. And then we also have to consider in the, in the negative ways. What if the ideal way is not going to happen soon? So can we go to the next slide, please? In this case, we, as a professional, we have to be ready in, in, every, in every case. We will, uh, we will um, encourage or we will urge the management to to utilize or to improve the training using the online training platform to keep the ATC uh, um, competency level are uh, still there when when the traffic even the traffic is going low if the if the crisis is long drawn so I think we we, we have to consider uh, all that uh, all that aspect and secondly. We also support our management to work uh, closely with the regulator to, to request the waiver, um, for example, to extend the ratings validity and the checks validity. Uh, normally, in the, in the normal situation, we have to check every six months or one year. And uh, previously, maybe last month or two months later, we also get a coordination with, uh, with DGCA as a regulator, they, they 
they provide a waiver for us to extend the, the validity of the rating to all controllers in, in, in our organization. And uh, there is always a bright side from a, from a situation. If we go to the historical data, there is no way we can, we can take a case or example to be used as our reference. So in this case, this is extraordinary case should be solved by extraordinary uh, solution. So the good things for, for my, from my perspective is even though we, we, we take unpopular decision or unpopular uh, solution to, to solve the problem, it will be considered as normal. That's, that's a good thing for me. Okay, next slide. Uh, that's my, my last presentation. Thank you for, for listening to my presentation and please feel free to have a question and I will be happy to answer all the uh, questions coming in. Thank you. Back to moderator. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Zainal Arivinarab. Such a good presentation. And now we know that uh, what is uh, organization really do to the members and uh, also we have uh, what to be executed once the pandemic end. And uh, before we go to uh, have a summary from all the speakers, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Muhammad Iksan Tatang, Bapak Tatang, mohon izin uh, perkenannya untuk memberikan tanggapan terkait webinar uh, dengan tema kali ini yang berjudul Challenges to the ATC Service Restart uh, Post COVID-19 Passing the New Normal with the Professional Readiness. Pada Bapak uh, Iksan Tatang, mohon izin waktu dan tempat kami persilahkan. Baik, terima kasih banyak. Selamat malam Pak Ari Satria. Good evening. Uh, all my colleagues in Indonesia, Singapore, and good morning, my colleagues in Montreal, also to all uh, speakers. Uh, firstly, thank you very much, Pak Ari Satria, uh, giving me a chance to give a comment in this uh, very uh, important discussion uh, tonight. Uh, so, uh, firstly, again, I would like to thank, to congratulate to all uh, Indonesian uh, transport community, because today is the special day yeah, for them. Yeah. Of, of course, also for me. Yeah. Uh, every year in September 17, all Indonesian transport community uh, celebrate this uh, uh, day. Uh, again, also uh, congratulations to Airnav Indonesia, because uh, now already entering the uh, already uh, eight years in uh, last uh, 13 September. Uh, I, I'm uh, I know and then I understand uh, just eight years, but really uh, very significant improving in how to enhance how to uh, run the air navigation system in for the whole part of Indonesian uh, territory. So, Pak uh, Ari Satria, uh, in the same time, now there are uh, discussion between all the key person in the air transport, including the AirNav, led by Ministry of Transport, they focus talking about also the, the how to restart uh, in facing the pandemic uh, COVID-19. Uh, they work together. They invite also uh, some uh, stakeholder from other, like uh, from Ministry of uh, Tourism and also Ministry of Health to discuss uh, how to solve, yes, what uh, I'm not talking about the situation of the air traffic control because already explained very clearly by Mr. Wisnu Daryono as the senior uh, controller. Also from Pak Jaina Arifin Harahap, yeah, already explained very clearly about what the uh, air traffic controller do so far in how to facing the pandemic COVID-19. So. Uh, I would like to inform to 
of us here. Now, uh, we know uh, so far the international fight is still uh, very low, yeah, because uh, the regulation of the each country uh, protect the air, uh, the international flight. Uh, but especially in Indonesia, uh, in this case, we try to synergize. We try to working together, sitting together in the table, how to discuss uh, in improving, uh, giving a better uh, condition. Uh, information to the people that uh, going everywhere by air is really very safe. So uh, now uh, we are happy uh, day by day, there are some improving of the number of uh, flight in domestic. Yeah, Roughly, if I'm not mistaken, there are already risk around 30, 20 to 30 uh, percent in average. Uh, compare then before uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, so in this case, uh, of course, uh, air navigation uh, take part of this uh, situation, yeah, working together, how to do the best, uh, especially uh, for the logistic, uh, we are happy uh, during the COVID-19, uh, there are some improving, there are some increasing the number of uh, cargo in some places yeah, to, to deliver from one point to other point the needed of the so many uh, uh, logistic uh, to the people, also including logistic to, uh, for the health in, in uh, enhanced in, uh, due to the uh, COVID-19. So uh, right now, yeah, the all uh, stakeholder, air transport stakeholder still uh, working hard, uh, hand in hand, uh, working together, how to uh, back uh, situation, uh, even in the condition of the COVID-19, uh, to giving the believing to the people to using again the uh, air transport. Uh, the air transport uh, really uh, very safe compared than other uh, mode of transportation. I think uh, this uh, the information because I also still uh, monitoring this discussion now the Minister of Transport still giving the speech. So uh, Again, uh, thank you very much for the chance, Pak Ari Satria, to me to giving a comment. Uh, I am very happy uh, mm -hmm. to hear. Uh, thank you very much. This is our pleasure, Mr. Tatang, uh, to have you as a commentator of this webinar. And also, um, for the next agenda, um, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Anthony Eng as a EVV Asia Pacific Region of IFATCA to make a five minute of summary and uh, answering the key and edit pointed to you. Mr. Anthony Eng, uh, time is yours. All right, thank you. I, I think I won't take more than five minutes. So uh, from the q and the summary that I'd like to draw is that uh, PDSD, Post uh, traumatic, uh, this uh, stress uh, disorder is real. It is uh, it is happening everywhere. So it might not you might not think that it happens to you. So I just want to quote a very simple example that uh, you think OJT is uh, very difficult, or you think that uh, today's uh, traffic is uh, the volume is uh, very difficult to handle. And when you go back home, you actually have a nightmare about aircraft are crashing. So this is actually PTSD. So. Uh, you, you have to identify all this or, or you could have a friend that actually passed away because of COVID and now you are suffering and you don't dare to go to work because uh, you are afraid that you might bring the virus home and your kids and your wife and your, and your parents and your grandparents. So, so I, I would say this is real. You need to find a friend. You need to find a peer. If the company can provide, if the association can provide, that would be good. The, provide the, the so-called listening listening to all the problems and uh, you might not be able to help them, but by listening, you already help them. They need someone to talk to. So uh, 
Uh, next thing would be uh, on the recovery. So I, I see the uh, Asia PAC is uh, doing a very, uh, which is good, slow and coordinated uh, recovery, uh, which is good. I would say that the IKO has done a great job in organizing the uh, coordinated uh, recovery. So I just hope that uh, everyone to still keep on the good uh, hygiene and practices, wash your hands and uh, uh, put on a face mask when you work. Uh, I mean, if you can, or when you travel. Otherwise, uh, I would say, yeah, if you're not feeling well, please don't go to work. Yeah, that's all I have. And for the question and answer, I will type it uh, inside the, you know, the Q&A so that I give the others, uh, you know, airtime. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Anthony Eng. Such a good summary to us to know. And um, for the next summary, we'll be uh, going to Mr. Fick van der Westhausen from IAQ. Mr. Fick, uh, five minutes, time is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mararita. I'll just summarize it quickly. I think we all wonder how long COVID-19 will last. In Canada, the numbers has gone up and everybody's talking about a second wave and we don't really know when it's gonna change. So it will have a definite impact on air traffic control. And I think one of the big areas is the degradation of competency, the skills. We can expect that. We also expect ATC numbers around the world to be reduced because of the economic impact as mentioned by some of the speakers. There's less money coming in, so the controllers are being furloughed. Another problem would be the information that's available and how quickly it will change from day to day, which could create a safety issue. We also have an airport capacity problem where there are many aircraft parked, the space is reduced, etc. so you cannot handle the numbers that you handled before. We can, of course, expect delays because not air traffic controller pilot-wise, but more what's happening in the terminal building with the different layers that the passengers had to go through and the changing of layers, that's going to delay them and eventually the aircraft. Then we have we must realize that Indonesia is going to been forecasted by Eurocontrol as well as IATA as being the third biggest travel market by the year 2030. We've seen some of the speakers lifting that numbers up. So there's going to be a, a sharp increase in the requirement for additional air traffic controllers. Now, on the one side, we're losing them because of COVID, and the other side, you're going to need them. So you will have to recruit controllers and you will have to increase your training. Being having said that, under the COVID, as pointed out by several of the other co-speakers, it's going to be very difficult how you're going to train them. And then how are you going to accommodate the increase of traffic if you do not have the number of people that or the air traffic controllers for that matter? I'd like to summarize that to compliment my co-speakers because there was very good presentations. I've also learned a lot from what they've said. And I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Fick, for the summarize. And the next uh, summarize will be uh, from Mr. Wisnu Jaryono from uh, President of uh, CSS Indonesia. Mr. Wisnu Jaryono, five minutes, time is yours. Silakan, Pak. Terima kasih, Mas Ari, the moderator. Uh, the condition we face in Indonesia as we discuss in this webinar, are not only experienced by Indonesia, but also by other countries. On this occasion, I hope that ATC Indonesia will continue to maintain its professionalism, health condition, and work motivation. ATC must be willing to learn and continue to train itself and the team so that our navigation services, as well as efficient safety in Indonesia, can be maintained in order to remain excellent. Di mana-mana mengalami kesulitan, uh, banyak orang yang menginginkan jadi ATC, juga saat ini dimanapun kelihatannya masih uh, terhalang untuk menjadi ATC, maka saya berharap memang teman-teman ATC tetap menjaga profesionalismenya. Ini adalah kesempatan untuk kita bisa membuka buku lagi, mengulang, mengulang beberapa hal. Dalam setiap kesulitan, selalu ada 
kemudahan, selalu ada hikmah yang bisa diambil. Saya kira pada kesulitan yang kita hadapi bersama-sama ini, memang eh, ada hal-hal yang bisa kita ambil manfaatnya. Mari kita memanfaatkan kesempatan ini untuk eh, mengatur pola kerja, mengatur eh, sistem prosedur dan sebagainya yang bisa kita lakukan secara bersama. It is can take advantage of this decreasing traffic condition. This is the best time to use it to organize procedure, organize work system, redesign ATS route so that service in Indonesia airspace will be better and safer. We all hope that COVID will end soon, but all of us must also prepare ourselves if this outbreak lasts a little longer. Saya kira itu Mas eh, Mas Ari, terima kasih. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Pak Wisnu Daryono. Eh, kalimatnya sangat memberikan semangat terutama kepada ATC di Indonesia untuk mengambil momen ini sebagai uh, chance untuk mengatur ulang kembali supaya lebih baik ke depannya. And for the next uh, summary will be from Mr. Zainal Arifin Harahab, Vice President for Professional of Indonesia Traffic Controllers Association. To Mr. Zainal Arifin Harahab, five minute time is yours. Uh, Bang Ucok, sorry, masih mute, Bang. Okay, thank you, Ari. Uh, as a summary, I will I, I would say that uh, as a professional uh, organization or as a professional air traffic controller, I will uh, I would say that we have to urge all the, the the members, all the controllers, to be ready in any situation. We have to keep the competency level are maintained. We have to keep our English proficiency are also uh, maintained. We have to, to be uh, healthy. We have to be uh, medical fitness are also met. And uh, we, uh, we, this is, we can use this, uh, this moment to, to do, uh, to, to, to do the, the, uh, the analysis that what we had been facing before, but we have no time to deal with that. To not, we don't have time to, to spend more time to solve that problem. So this is the, the best moment for us to, to restart the, the work. So I think that's that's the the, the summary from from Ayaka as an organization organizational. Thank yep. you, Ari. Well, thank you very much, Bang Ucok, for the summarize. Uh, jadi kita bisa tahu bagaimana uh, Ayaka selaku organisasi profesional dalam memitigasi uh, pandemi ini untuk uh, apa yang dilakukan sekarang dan nanti pasca pandemi ini selesai. Since we have uh, all the speakers giving the summaries and uh, now we have uh, conclusion remarks that will be uh, pointed to Mr. Ivan Yustri Maharika from CSS Indonesia. And uh, Mr. Ivan, uh, please kindly take this moment to make a conclusion remarks of this webinar. Mr. Ivan, time is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ivan, for the opportunity. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning in Montreal. Good evening in Indonesia and also in Singapore. The honorable speakers, Mr. Vic van der Westhuizen from IKO, Mr. Anthony Yang from IFATKA Asia Pacific, Mr. Wisnu Darjono, President of CSS Indonesia, Mr. Zainal Arifin Arab from IFATKA, Mr. Moi Santakang as our finalist and also all our invited panelists. Mr. Risatria as a moderator, team of CSS, and also all of the participants. As we know that the COVID-19 continues to the impact of the dynamic between all the actors of the efficient supply chain. This also includes the interface, communication, and operating environment for HIV controllers. As we discussed today with the IQ expert insight, academic perspective, international and national ATC professional organization, there are some effects according to the COVID-19 pandemic and also some mitigation measures should be implemented during the restart phase of aviation. The air traffic is increasing deeply. 
since the COVID-19 spread all over the world. It is significantly impact for ATC officer. Some adjustment of traffic management, ATC ship management, and also procedure of health protocol for ATC officer during duty while on the pandemic situation need to be prepared to keep the orderly of operation as well. Several considerations need to be made with regards to the effect of the training and recency. Some solution using the technology with the simulator could be helped to maintain the ATC skill level. There is also some hazard may occur during the restart operation for ATC officer, such as for human factor, like potential of stress emotional due to financial impact, degradation of mental health, personal confidence reduction, and also working environment where ATC interact with each other could be different. In addition, foreign traffic level after period of reduction of operation could increase the magnitude of certain operational challenges for ATC. A minimum awareness and loss of focus or attention due to long break could be occurred and it need an intensive monitoring so the safe operation can be maintained. The combination of the new animal fight risk and challenge could be affect safety of operation as traffic level built up. Many things that ATC should be prepared. We, we should work together and fight against the COVID-19 pandemic so the safe operation can be achieved. Thank you for the moderator. Thank you very much, Mr. Rivan, to make a conclusion of this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, since we have a conclusion remark that, uh, that coming from Mr. Ivan Isimaharika from CSIS Indonesia, this is gonna be the end of this webinar. And also I have to say a uh, nice quotes from Winston Churchill that this is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. Terima kasih kepada Bapak Ibu yang terhormat telah berkenan untuk bergabung di dalam webinar uh, CSS pada kali ini. Uh, jika ada kesalahan, uh, mohon dimaafkan. Dan uh, kami sangat berterima kasih juga kepada seluruh speaker. Uh, I would like to say thank you very much to Mr. Vic van der Westhausen and also Mr. Anthony Eng, Mr. Wisio Jarjono, and Mr. General Arifin Arhap to make a good presentation in this webinar. And... Um, for the last but not least, I would like to say thank you to all uh, panelists and attendees. Uh, in this time, I would like to close this webinar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jika ada uh, pertanyaan yang belum terjawab, silahkan menghubungi para panelis dan uh, moderator yang ada di screen masing-masing sebagai berikut. Terima kasih dan kurang lebihnya mohon maaf. Wabillahi taufik walidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Fix. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Pak Tani. Thank you. Thank you, Pak. Uh, it was a pleasure, sir. Bye, See everybody. Next time. Thank you, Fix. Pleasure. See you next, See you next time. Thank See you next time. Yes. Terima kasih, Mas. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Terima kasih, Pak Wisnu. Selamat Terima. malam, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Terima kasih, banyak. Selamat malam, Pak. Terima kasih, udah diundang. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih, Pak. Thank you, Anthony. Long time, Thank you, Anthony. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Alhamdulillah sehat Bapak. Apa kabar Jim Pak? Pak ya. Ya, Pak Tata. Terima kasih Pak Tata. Terima kasih. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Ayo kita geser ke sebelah. Yuk, geser. <laughs> Baru Mas, mulai juga kok Pak. Thank you Anthony. See you next Hi, time. You. All right, I'll take my leave. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Anthony. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.